Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And welcome to Dice Hour Live Q&A. Once again, we're doing it from my house, which means a couple things. That we don't have the fancy lighting, and we have the good microphones this time, but we do not have sound dampening in this room. So you might hear An bouncing echo. off the walls. Plus we have a things. different background than normal. Hey, kids' toys, that's so authentic. <laughs> um, at least they're cleaned up for his. Um, but anyhow, we're here to talk and answer live questions. Um, we are specifically hoping to get questions about the cruise, and a little bit later in here, we're going to have a few announcements before we want to wait till people get in here and stuff. Um, but we'll, if you have questions about the Dice Tower cruise, which is happening when? December 2nd through December 7th on Royal Caribbean, the Independence of the Seas. All right, so just to give you a quick rundown here of the cruise itself. Hopefully you would fly in the day before, because unless you live in Florida, you should always fly into any cruise the day before, just in case there's a delay in your plane, because the cruise ship ain't going to wait for you. So you fly in the day before, and then you come to Cool Stuff that night. We have a party. A party at Cool Stuff in uh, Hollywood, uh, Florida, and there will be pizza, and we'll be playing games, because why not get started early? Yep. And giveaways. There might even be giveaways and things there, too. That's, that, that's pre-cruise. And so then the cruise day itself... It leaves around 11 o'clock or so. It leaves at 4, but you could get on at 11, have lunch. You should get on earlier that. And then you'll come through registration with us. After you go through the, the cruise registration, when you get on the ship, you'll come through our registration. And at our registration, you will be getting a T-shirt. Yep. And a at least a super goodie bag. We're going to call it super goodie bag because we have even more publishers coming with us this year. So all we... Okay, so we have many publishers... Coming. We do not know what they're going to be handing out, but we can confirm that you will be getting Royals, Speechless, and Chef sure, um, Nottingham, Nottingham expansion. expansion. Okay, and more games. So, I mean, this is like a good chunk of the price right there. Yes. Um, All to take home. Lots of swag. I mean, it's the swag bag of swag bags. The swag bag of swag bags. Um, so, anywho, um, then. I would say we don't open open gaming until after the ship gets started, basically, because we don't want to have to throw everyone out because they always do a ship, like, uh, safety... They do a safety check, and safety then after check. that... I mean, but here's the good thing. In the lounge where we're going to be doing the registration, which is the nightclub lounge what called the Raven, what we're going to be doing there is we have a party there. They're going to have the bar open for us so people could get drinks. They could, you know... They could do what they want because they're going to have service this time, as opposed to last year where we had no service and we were just sitting in the pyramid lounge. This time we actually have service at the lounge. Within reason, within reason, within reason. It's a family-friendly no, convention. No, uh, you can get soda as well. Okay. When I said drinks, I didn't mean just alcoholic. I meant soda or whatever you want. They'll have the the bar area will be open serving, so you can buy whatever you want. Okay, so then after that, um, we're going to be doing several game shows over the course of the cruise. We'll have a full schedule up later. Um, we'll be every night, our meal time, which is six o'clock, I think, right? Six so o'clock. At six o'clock, we all, you don't have to go, but you can go, you can go eat at the buffet because you can eat anytime you want on the ship. So if you don't want to go, but, but we go for dinner at six and we have a whole section of the dining room, which by the way, we have a whole floor this year. We have the whole floor this year. We have a whole floor of the dining room. So what we do is we all spread out too. So there's a chance you can eat at my table or Jason's table or anyone else's table. But the thing is, no matter whose table you're sitting at, you can be like, so you like board games? <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's a, there's a chance that... That they will. That they will. So that's a conversation starter, and it's a lot of fun. And, of course, the food there is phenomenal. And, we, like I said, we do different shows throughout the time. And the open game room is open 24 hours. But yes. But you can also game in other places. Like the, the place where we eat dinner, during the day, you can game in there. Yes, we have that all day until they start to clear it out to get ready for dinner. So we have that all day. We have the nightclub all day up until they turn it into a nightclub. We have a lounge so at night. So we're technically a day club. Yeah, we're, we're the day club for the nightclub. We have a lot of space this year. I mean, we, we have 300 rooms, like we said, so it's going to be 600 and something people. Keep going, I want to check something And there. of the 600 and something people, we have enough space to make sure that everyone has a space to game throughout the day, throughout the night. There's many things to do on the ship. You've got... Ice skating, there's an ice skating show. You've got, last year it was Greece, and I believe it's going to be Greece again, but I'm not sure, but there's going to be...
got rock climbing, you've got surfboarding, you've got all these things to do on top of just gaming, but on top of it you get all the gaming you want in there, and you get the swag bag of games, you get, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of cool things. There's a wedding, I, um, we have someone who's getting married on the ship that Tom's gonna preside over what? a wedding. No one told me this. <laughs> I'm telling him now, no, he, he knew, but I'm telling him again now. We, we actually are gonna be doing wedding renewal vows. We have the chapel for one, for one afternoon where we're gonna do that as well, you know, where we like to take care of the people because we say that, you know, if you're coming on this, we want you to feel extra special because it's an extra special time. We really do, and um, it's, it's going to be a good time. Uh, did you mention I, I did a church service on Sunday? Yes, there's a church service Sunday morning. Hey, again, all this stuff is optional. That's the thing about the cruise. If you want to come on the cruise and ignore us the entire time, you, you can. can do that. There, right? there were wives of gamers who literally spent time at the pool and in the spa getting massages and did nothing involved with gaming. So don't feel shy about if you have a non-gamer spouse, don't feel shy about it because they'll have plenty of things to do because it is still a cruise and there's still many things to do and lots of good food and lots of good everything. Right, and, and that's the biggest thing. That's a, the biggest question I get asked is, uh, I have kids uh, or I have a spouse who's not really that into gaming, will they have a great time? And the fact is, yes. My wife came, I think she came to the game room once maybe. My kids came once. There's kids programs on the ship that my kids love. The teenagers, they just have, they have a teen program and they do all kinds of stuff. They, I barely saw them. Um, but the, but my younger kids, there's a program that's, it's, it's a free program. It comes with the price of the cruise. Yep. And you, I mean, there are certain times they might charge you like late and weird times, but especially during the day that you let your kids there and you don't hear from them again. It's fantastic. It's fun. The kids have a great time. The kids, my kids are dying to go back. They don't care one whit if it was a gaming cruise or not. And my wife had a fantastic time. And uh, like I said, there's a good chunk of people. But even the people who don't like games, we found that most of them still came to our game shows and stuff. Yeah, I mean, our game shows are fun. You know, I mean, there you, you see our game shows all the time when you watch the live streams from Dice Tower Con. And we do the same kind of game shows on the ship. And obviously in a nice theater atmosphere because they have lighting and everything. and and a nice setup because they're used to putting on shows. So we get, and that was probably the nicest setup we had for a show out of any show all year. <laughs> it was the nicest we were ever dressed because it was the one nice <laughs> night. You don't have to dress up for that night on the, on the dinner, but people do. I, I don't understand it. Tradition. Um, but we did our, we did our show. Is it set in up suits. that same thing? Yes, it's the show is on, on formal night I again. Like this. I like to see Stan and Z in suits. <laughs> That's the once a year that everyone could see you know, our whole group was in suits. We literally had a whole room of suits there. It was great. It was it was cool. It was it was it's as good as it get and everything's included. That's the one good thing is your food, everything except for soda and alcoholic drinks are included. So you get your juices, your water, all that's included. By the way, I don't think unless you like guzzle soda tomorrow. Getting the all you can drink soda package is not worth it. I you don't do, think so either. You'd have to get like you have to drink like four pretty big sodas a day. And yeah. all that other stuff that's there. And we're also making two stops, Cozumel and... Cozumel and Costa Maya, both in Mexico. There's amazing things to do there. If you like, if you like sightseeing in, in the city, you can do that. If you like Mexican ruins, you can go out and see the Mayan ruins. In fact, there's one tour that goes out to Tulum, which is where Star Wars was filmed. So you can actually see the rebel base. Um, there's also plenty of water activities. There's snorkeling, there's scuba diving, there's taking catamarans out. So whatever kind of activity you're looking to do, you can do that where we are. Okay, so we're gonna start doing two questions. We'd like to give priority to the cruise questions if we can, but we'll go through as many even, you know, whatever gaming questions. And Jason will make an announcement about halfway through, um, a couple of announcements about the cruise. Um, so first of all, what do you think about today's Spiel des Jahres? Um, you don't know who won yet? No, I don't know who won yet. Okay, well, that's good. So Jason doesn't know who won, so let's, you're going to predict and see if you're correct. Okay. So if you remember for the uh, regular Spiel des Jahres, there was King Domino, Race to El Dorado, and Magic Maze. I want Magic Maze to win. I have a feeling it didn't, but I'm still picking Magic Maze because I think it's the best game of the three. So you think that's what won? I'm hoping that's what won. What I really think won because it's Reiner Knizia, I'm thinking El Dorado won, but I really want Magic Maze to win. 
Actually, you're incorrect on all counts. It was King Domino that won. I liked Magic Maze the best of them, too, but I would have been really surprised had it won. I felt like it had the most longer shot. King Domino is really simple and easy to get into. I don't actually like King Domino. It's okay, I guess, um, but I, I think it's a good winner. It's a good winner. It's not... It's a good game. I mean, I like King Domino, but it's not a game that I don't think is going to last year, years from now. So I don't think it has the staying power of some other Spiel de Jar winners. Now, the Kenner Spiel, the gamer's game, was Raiders of the North Sea, uh, Terraforming Mars, and the Exit series of games. Now, this one, I want Terraforming Mars to win, and I think it won, and if it didn't win, there's the issues. Well, you have issues then because Exit Series won. Really? Well, here's the deal. I, I think I think the reason Terraforming Mars did not take the top prize home is because it just doesn't look as good as it could look. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I know that doesn't like. matter to you, but and, it matters to and, the, the And jury, Exit's sure. great, and I played the Exit games, and I love them, but Game of the Year? I don't know. Well, anyhow, how's your arm? It's doing okay. As you can see, I'm out of the cast. I'm in a splint now. and I'm... Tell people how you got it hurt real quick because someone's going to ask that. Uh, we, we can't talk about it because it's, uh, it's a secret. Jason will never, ever criticize one of my games again. <laughs> Correct. Um, no, it was playing soccer. And it's, the, bones, the bones healed and it's doing good. I could actually, I'll show you very quickly. I could actually bend it. super gross. Oh. I could... I could actually bend it a little. I'm, I'm in my physical therapy stage where I have to do exercises like this to get my range of motion back. Oh, you're using my Q&A for a, an exercise session. Um, that's it. Just, just want to show everyone that, it, that it's doing okay. Actually, he did this in the middle of a game. We were playing some white games the other night. <laughs> yes, I did because you have to do it three times a day because or else my arm won't get better quickly. Have you had a chance to play Dead of Winter Flick em Up? Can we expect a review on it soon? And the answer to that is yes. And yes, review of that will be going up Wednesday, I think. Um, so, and you played it too, right? Yes, it's. I'm gonna say it's awesome since I didn't do the review. Shocking. I'm gonna say it's really awesome. I mean, I love Flick 'em Up, and I mean, Flick 'em Up with Dead of Winter, and yeah, I just wish they make a wood version eventually. It says Jason, do you write your games? You don't have them rated on Board Game Geek. No. Um, have you ever thought about doing that? That's like a project and a half. <laughs> that would be more than a project and a half. But you could just start at the top 100 games on Board Game Geek. You've played most of them and just go through and start rating those. I could, but that would be... I don't even know how much time it would take to get through. It would take Yeah, just do a, a couple weeks. hundred a day. It wouldn't take days. It would take weeks to go through everything. So, speaking of that, they still... Guinness never got back to me. They I did. wrote to them, they said it was 12 weeks, and they never got back to me about doing the Guinness record of the most games. So I don't understand what's going on with Guinness at all, but, but I'm going to write back to them again and see if we can get this done before the end of the year. Uh, Anthony, I already answered this, but I'll repeat it. Will there be church services? Yes, specifically Catholic. I don't think there's Catholic services on the thing, but didn't, wait, didn't someone pay for a priest to come? Someone said they were paying to have a priest to do a Catholic ceremony, so I think there's going to be a Catholic priest on there. I'm not exactly sure what the situation is, but yes, yeah, someone wanted to bring their own priest to do a Catholic ceremony, so there might be. There isn't that we know of other than that, but that might happen. Um, we used to do a segment of Board Game Breakfast that was about game rooms. Can you bring it back or have videos that show off game rooms? Um, the reason I let it go was because I just stopped getting videos from people about their game rooms. If anyone sent one in and it was decent quality, we'd probably play it. I, maybe I'll put out a call on the, on the podcast again. What's the one game you won't play with Jason? Oh, I have several. <laughs> Off the top ahead, Exodus, Proxima Centauri. Any game that has multiple attacking. Yes. Does Cosmic have a learning curve? My wife and I finally played it, and while I enjoyed it a great deal, she despised it. She tends to like more social games, but it seems like she just didn't get it. If, I don't think it has anything to do with the learning curve. If she didn't get it, she doesn't like it. You know, I, I would never try to make someone play something they don't like. Uh, what popular term would you find most satisfying to strike from the board gaming lexicon? <laughs> I don't know. Die? Meeple? I don't meeple. know. Yeah, meeple. Any, no, any word that ends in eeple but isn't meeple. V veggie meeple? Yeah, like people are saying sheeple and, you know, yes. oh, look at the giraffe people. I'm like, ah. 
Uh, what games were you most excited about at Dice Tower Con and Origins? And Dice Tower Con, easy for me, was viral because it was the first time I saw it. Um, and Origins, probably I was excited most about seeing the um, Immortals. What about you? Um, Magic Maze, I, I mean, I had played it before. Dice Tower Con, but it was out there. I got to play a game, Codenames Duet. I played a bunch of games. Um, those were the ones I was most excited about. Uh, my wife and I just got the game Terraforming Mars. Do you have any tips before we play? Don't start with the basic corporations. Use the advanced ones because they give you kind of a focus on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Use the, the advanced ones are really cool and worth it. I know it sounds like, oh, it's advanced. I want to play a basic game. But the advanced one will be stuff like, hey, you get more iron than everyone else. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I'll build buildings with this iron. It, <coughs> it just makes more sense to me. Um, this one here says they haven't received a confirmation email after payment. Should I mail cool stuff to check if everything went through? Okay. How would you actually call? So here's here's the deal. There's we're talking about the cruise here, by the way. There's three different confirmations you're gonna get. The first thing you're gonna get is you're gonna get a little receipt from cool stuff that says you paid. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get I've been as people pay, I get sent information and I put you onto the information list, which is a Google group. And I send out stuff to that Google group every once in a while, which I'm going to send out something in the next day, which will be some good news for those who have already signed up for the cruise. And then the third thing you will get, I'd say closer to the end of August, beginning of September or so, once we fill up the, the cruise, you'll get a confirmation from me saying what your cruise reservation number is. And, and then you'll be able to go and actually look at your Royal Caribbean. I know people are getting confused because there's a cool stuff receipt and a cool stuff confirmation number and then there's a separate Royal Caribbean confirmation number. Those Royal Caribbean prefers that I send in the whole list at once. So we're waiting until the cruise is almost to the full point and then I'm gonna send in that list so they could assign all the numbers and then I will send them out to everyone so they could find out what their room is. But don't worry about shore excursions. I know people seem nervous, but you can't register for shore excursions for any things on the ship like hair appointments or spa or whatever until 90 days out anyway so don't worry around the end of august beginning of september once we're pretty full i'll be i'll be sending it to royal caribbean they'll give me back the numbers and then we'll send it out to everyone and you will have your actual royal caribbean reservation at that point would you consider this the golden age of board gaming yes yeah i'm always going to say that um anyway um have you beaten the death star perplexus sitting behind you no just to be clear, I've never beaten any. Well, okay, I beat the easy kid perplexes. I think they're all super hard. I haven't played it yet, but I'm excited to play it. Tom showed me it, and it seems really cool. But it would be really, it's really hard. Jason, what did you think of the Dice Tower Awards, especially the joke you played on Tom and the gang for Game of the Year? Well, I, uh, I had told Tom beforehand that I, you know, I wanted to do it. And he goes, "No La La Land references." He actually said this. When Wait, I did I say that? He said it at one point. And yeah, I probably did. That was probably like right after it happened. That was right after it happened. And so since I wasn't going to be there because I knew I was going to have to be at work, I figured, well, if I slip it in the envelope, when they pull out the envelope, they'll give that, I guess, the same uh, Faye Dunaway kind of weird reaction looking at it. What's ironic is this year, Tom actually, by accident, because I had made, I had made all those videos, including the winter videos, Tom was only supposed to look at one winter video just to see how they looked but he accidentally opened them all, so he knew what the winner was. So seeing Tom's reaction, I think he originally thought Eric was the one who made the joke. No, I did. I thought <laughs> Eric was just making a joke, and I was like, whatever. Wait, that's on a certificate? <laughs> I had a certificate around here somewhere. And it, it actually said, La La Land, designed by Tom Bassel, published by Dice Tower Essentials. So I put the whole joke in there um, for them to see, which I thought was really funny. And Eric's deadpan reading it, was just amazing and then when he when he turns around and said um well there's been a mistake it was just perfect he played it off absolutely perfectly and yeah i was i was happy to throw that in there and hmm. it came off well i mean obviously you know if i was there i would have done a little different we, i would have had a first envelope and i would have come running on with a second envelope and made it more like the way it was at the oscars but since i wasn't there i put everything in one envelope which was Almost as good. It worked. Tom, Tom obviously cracked up a lot. I, I saw that part of the video. It was funny. Will you do a review of Chip Theory's games, new Kickstarter trip block? Currently, we don't do reviews of Kickstarter games, 
But we will be soon reviewing uh, Too Many Bones from Chip Theory. That's actually coming probably next week. What size for t-shirts to Tom, Z, Sam, and Jason? Uh, I'm a large. I don't know what everyone else is. I'm a large. Get down to XL, but I won't. Probably 2XL at this point. But T, I always ask for tall. And Z is 2XL, and I think Sam is 3. Um, how soon will you get to cast off your dimension? How does a broken arm affect your gaming? Um, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't break your arm, did you? I fractured the what's called the radial bone at the tip. It didn't go all the way through. Um, I was gaming with the cast. You know, my fingers are, were mobile. Now, obviously, I could pull this out when I need to and do bending and everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it didn't affect it too much. Obviously, shuffling a deck is a little difficult right now with this, with the brace. But other than that, everything's fine. It's good. I could get Tom to clean up the games when we play lately. <laughs> Jeff says... My wife is needs, gonna need softer food. Is this something you can check in with the cruise line about? Yeah, if there's any requests, um, we have people who have allergies to different foods or certain things like that. And if so, um, you'll, I'm, I'm gonna, when I send out the email with the reservation numbers, I ask everyone that and reply back to that email with your, with your cruise reservation number. And at that point, we make sure that all our allergy people or people who have special dining needs are put in, as opposed to round robin, like everyone else, they sit at specific tables, so the wait staff has the same wait staff every night and will take care of all, all of the needs. This person says, Tom, when you played this War of Mind for Review, did you play it solo or multiplayer? I played it multiplayer. I didn't play it solo at all. We played it together, that, that game. The first game? Oh, you were in that game? Yeah, remember? Remember where we got totally creamed and like our guy got killed and then our other guy wanted cigarettes and... I got killed. Well, just and to be clear, I, I got destroyed <laughs> in all my games, and it was not. It was. It's an interesting game because it's a good game. It's hard to call it fun. I. I enjoyed it. Don't I mean, you think it's dark though? It is, but you know, I, I watch a lot of movies, and or I watch movies of that vein. I'm, you know, I'm not shy about rated R things, so it didn't disturb me. Um, I know other people are feeling disturbed by it, but it didn't disturb me. Um, obviously, if it's real life, it's a whole different situation. But in a game, it's, I take it with the grain of salt of that it's a game. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Jason, are you going to Gen Con? Yes. Do you have a game that you're excited about from Gen Con? Um, you haven't even looked at the list. No, I haven't looked at the list. I knew it. But, but I could tell you what I'm most excited about, Pandemic Legacy 2. I'm not sure that's going to be at Gen Con. In fact, I don't think it will be. If it's not at, at Gen Con, then flick them up Dead of Winter. Expansion um, for Terraforming Mars? Expansion for Terraforming Mars, um, yes. There's course. probably other games you're excited about. You probably just don't know them. And I haven't even done much research myself, but I will be doing so in the coming weeks. Um... Jason, will you, be, will you be filming any of the live shows on the cruise for the channel? Possibly, but don't count on it. The whole point of us going on the cruise is to make the experience as good for the people on the cruise as we can, and dragging a whole bunch of cameras on board is just kind of a... Did we, did we... I blogged. I blogged everything last year, and I got... We put in I think we footage. recorded our live show The there. live show, we recorded the whole live show, yes. That, the live show was actually... That's the only one we recorded, though. We didn't record our game shows and stuff. Yeah. The game shows are game shows, so yeah, we didn't record them. Will you be running a big Formula D game? Is this something you do? Uh, I used to at WBC run Formula D, but I haven't in a while. I will be running a Tumbling Dice Championship of the World. Yeah, and... I, I got my dice for that today. I'm ready to go. Giant Jenga tournament on a cruise ship after Giant Jenga at the thing? I have a Giant Jenga. I know. <laughs> It, it was a dice archon, I know. I just bought a giant kerplunk. Garbage. Garbage. Don't buy it. Garbage. They owe me money back for that one. That's how garbage it is. Uh, Jeff, uh, email us offline. Um, have you considered using... Let's see. Has LASIK surgery made you a more skilled gamer? Um... I don't know about more skilled, but it's good to be able to not have glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Um, what game would you pick to have a company make for you with the price tag of $2,000, but it would be like a perfectly customized anything you want game? 
if it could be any game and it was customized as like a super deluxe edition, an 18x. I mean, like a, okay, they they want a real answer. <laughs> Not some garbage eighteen XX. I'd want like the super deluxe, like with wood tiles and, but that would yeah, that's what I'd want. And like real choo choo trains and you know, if if I really could get you know, a game, that's what I'd want. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So, have you played Container? Yes. Are you excited about the new anniversary edition? Not at all. You didn't like Container? No, I didn't. I feel that in the game. There's an imbalancing factor where, you know, people keep raising the prices because they want to make more money and eventually the prices get too high and people can't buy it and the, mo the whole market aspect of the pricing is not very good and it, it leads to a drab game and I, I didn't enjoy Container. Drab. I didn't really enjoy Container either because I didn't like the fact that you had to sell the good to another player, yep. then buy it back from that player. Yep. And then sell it again, and it just felt there was too many steps to get victory points. I, I didn't feel very enjoyable. And, of course, then everyone price fixes to the highest price, so you might as well just set it at the highest price for the whole game. Uh, how are you maintaining your gaming fix since you've been so busy for the last few months? Um, I haven't gamed as much. I yeah, mean, you really have been. I've been busy. Life is getting easier. Copa Oro is almost over, so life is getting easy again, and I'll be gaming a lot soon. Do you guys ever go to AG's big game night at Gen Con? I've been there for part of it, but most of the time we, we used to do our show during that time. Now that our shows move during the day because we want the big room, now we, uh, we usually go out to dinner, and by the time we get back, it's like almost over. What is the big game night? Have I been to it? It's where they give out that big box of games. Oh, yes, yes, but that's right. We stopped by later. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Can we bring a smoothie blender on the cruise? I don't know. You're going to have to ask the cruise line that one specifically. Are we allowed to check out games and then play them in our room? Uh, I don't see why not. Now the only issue becomes we, we had some issues at Dice Tarot Con where people checked out games for 15 hours straight. We just want people to return them in a timely manner so other people could get to play the game. But yeah, I, we just ask that you be pleasant towards other people. We, we, we say you can check a game out and play it anywhere on the ship. Yeah, I mean, people were playing in the library. They were playing in the upstairs where there's windows and you can see out the ocean. They were playing everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you take the game. Just return it in a timely manner because there might be other people that want to play it. About two months before the cruise, maybe a little bit more earlier than that, we'll send out a questionnaire and you can tell us a game you would like to see on the cruise. We'll let you pick two games. These are games I really want to see on a cruise. Now, I'm not saying that that guarantees that the game will be on the cruise, but if multiple people are picking the same games, you'll definitely see them in the library. And yeah. if a lot of people want to play the same game, I'll make sure that there's more than one copy too. Yep, so if you guys all put 18X, 18X will be there. <laughs> um, I have not played Cosmic Kaboom. Cosmic Kaboom? Colin, do you want to get a copy of my sermon notes? I don't know if I have them anymore uh, from Dice Tower Con. I'll have to look, but I might not have them anymore. Um, Jason, what's the one game you won't play with Tom? Um, I don't know. I'll play anything 18 with 18XX. No, you would probably let me play that. I would play 18XX with Tom. I've been trying to play it with him. I mean, I'd play anything. I, I'm pretty much, you know, I, I like playing games and, you know, even if, if, like, Tom gangs up on me on gameplay, still play him with him. Oh, yeah, I'm the bully. Um, <laughs> Jason's always whooping up on me. Um, what did we play? Okay, let's go over the games we just played uh, the last time we were together. We played a co-op game, which we lost together. Yes. We played a game that you whooped up on me, but it didn't count because it wasn't actually a game. Oh, That's yeah. uh, Saboteur the Duel. And we played the flicking thing. The you other... won that one, though. That was skill. That was fun. You beat me on that. Um, that was three to one, I believe, was the score. And what else did we play? Uh, what else we played? That's because Flip Ships was the best thing there. <laughs> yeah, Flip Ships was really good. Um, uh, are we going to post the Time Stories gameplays? We're hoping to. Who are the Dice Tower contributors going on the cruise that you can announce at this time? Uh, Mike Parkinson. Oh, Mike Parkinson's going? Mike Parkinson well, is fantastic. going. that's fantastic. Vernon, our painter, is going. Me, Sam, Z, Eric, of course. Um, me, Jason, um, K 
Canny. Our webmaster, Robert, is going. Yes, Derek. Derek will be there for um, sure. And... Uh, there might be a few other people that we don't there, know off yeah, the top there, of our head, but those are the ones we few. know. Is there going to be pre-cruise gaming at the CSI the night before again? Yes, there will be. Oh, so the new... You heard Cash Card's been picked up by an English company. Has it been finally? I've been pushing Grail for this. Grail Games is going to be doing Thank it. Thank you, Grail Games. Well, they, they probably heard me raving about it again and again and I'm again. I'm sure that was the reasoning behind their thing. They did Med Medici, which I also really like. Grail Games, you guys are awesome. Have you finished Gloomhaven? No, I don't know if I'll ever finish it, but I, I, will, I do want to be playing it soon. Will Jace be doing updates to your top 100 games this year? We might save that for next year. Yeah, Wait, you didn't, year. Did you do it last year or did you do it two years ago, right? I did ago, it right? two years ago. 2015 I did it. Because it was right before Food Chain Magnate came out when I did it. It all depends. We already have a pile of top 100s coming up, so we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it'll probably, watch for the Indiegogo next year and you'll, you'll probably see that as one of the stretch goals. What was your favorite game played at Dice Tower Con? All right, taking out the big events like um, uh, the uh, Mega Game and What's the Wagers and Pitch Car. Single game I played like 10 times was Tief Tashin. Love that game. Yes, Tief Toshin is incredible. It's it, it's uh, Junta without the board and the four-hour playing time. It's incredible. Are you planning on reviewing Side Real Confluence eventually? I have it. I just haven't played it yet. Jason, will you guys get a chance to do more Every Game is Awesome series? Uh, there's some coming out in the next week or two. Uh, yeah, definitely this week you'll see some. Yeah, well, now, now that I have a little more free time, I'll be able to do more again. Oh, okay, someone asked about the joke in the game of the year. What does that mean exactly? If you watch the Oscars this year, at the very end, they announced that La La Land had won for Best Picture, which it should have because it was a great. Um, but instead it was uh, Moonlight. Moonlight, which was set here in Miami. Right, and I'm not saying anything good or bad for it. Well, I haven't seen Moonlight, so I don't know, but... Halfway through, they realized it, and they had to come up and like and say, "Wait a second, sorry." The wrong envelope. As the as the La La Land people were celebrating, it's going to go down as one of the most infamous moments in in Oscar history. Oscar history. But you know what? These things can happen. I don't always get on people for mistakes because mistakes are so easy. Yes, yeah, Steve Harvey did the same thing for the Miss Universe, where he announced the wrong Miss Universe. And again, so. people like <laughs> laugh and criticize, but you run an event with no mistakes consistently, and I'll grant it to you. It's hard, right? Yeah. And that was a very obvious one. So we were just making like fun of it. Yes. Um, when you need to get rid of a game for space, how strong are you to consider the availability of the game? Are you less likely to get rid of a rare or out-of-print game? That means nothing to me, but it probably means more to you. I, I haven't gotten rid of a game yet. Maybe next year. If we do Guinness, I might have a sale next year and sell some stuff. Once I do Guinness, I have to do Guinness first, and then we'll figure it out. Well, a bunch of banning going on. What happened at the bottom? I don't know, but I really like him. <laughs> no, go up one. No, I, I, can't, I couldn't see what he Brian said. Brian Patsman, who came to the dinner with us at Dice Telecon. There he is, Brian Patsman. I really enjoy. He 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 was the guy who who. Uh, Brian Patsman, if you guys don't know, he was the one who bid to do dinner with us during the Jack Vassell auction, and he was wonderful. He, he, he drove us to Disney for the dinner. He drove me to Disney. I joined him, and we had a really good time with him. We played some games afterwards. I, I played a few games with him afterwards, and uh, we had a really nice night. Uh, we're getting spammed by a bunch of people here in the comments. That's not cool. And apparently that has... Uh, let me see if I can... I don't know if I can get back to some of the other questions. Uh, because the spammers kind of knocked them off the screen. I'm really sorry, folks. I asked the question uh, past where all the spammers, before all the spammers hit, it got deleted, and I, you'll have to re-ask it. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, that's, that's a shame. But uh, looks like uh, one of our moderators is uh, banning spammers, so that's good. Madison says, my husband's a gamer, but I love games. Oh, my husband isn't a gamer. He's currently tolerating, tolerating Pandemic Legacy with me. What should I pick up next that appeals to non-gamers? Uh, do the Exit series of games. Exit. Real fun. Yes, yes. Exit, which is the Kenner Spiel winner, as, as I now know. Um, the Exit's really fun, and um, Unlock is really fun. All the, all the escape rooms are fun. I mean, real escape rooms are fun, but the board game version of the escape rooms are really fun as well. 
Are you making a Gen Con guide this year? We will be, but closer to Gen Con. Um, man, so much spamming. Do you prefer long, expansive worker placement games like Cavern and Feast of Odin, or something tighter like Viticulture? Ah, uh, well, first of all, I don't really see a huge difference between the weight of those games. Viticulture, especially with Tuscany in in involved, is the same. Um, and if you want a very expansive worker placement game, you can play um, The Colonist. Colonist. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think Uwe can get more expensive, expansive than Feast? Yes. Have you played The Colonist? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Even um, though he didn't do that one. No, but I'm saying that's, that's kind of what it could yes. be like. I could have sworn I saw something crawling in the green container behind you. Huh? I don't see anything crawling. I'm going to assume no because that would freak me out, first of all. Um, but secondly, I think what you're seeing is the shadow of the fan um, on the, the this, and I'm now spooked out because it better not be a scorpion. All right. Yeah, seeing a real scorpion must have been interesting. I missed that one. Yeah, you missed it because I screamed like a worried person. Well, wh while you're looking for messages, you want me to do the, the announcements? Oh, yeah, we are halfway through. All right, so what are some announcements about the cruise, Jason? So... Those of you who are at Dice Tower Con, if you remember, we tried to get the word out, but it was tough while we were there that we were giving a $50 discount to anyone who attended Dice Tower Con. We decided, because a lot of people didn't hear that announcement or, or come to my question and answer session that we literally scheduled the night before, um, we're going to extend that. So if you went to Dice Tower Con, expect a mass mail from Dice Tower Con in the next day or two, and we're going to extend the $50 discount for the next month. So if you went to Dice Tower Con and you want to come on Dice Tower Cruise, we're extending that $50 discount for a month for all of you guys to thank you for coming to Dice Tower Con and making it such a success. You know, we doubled from 1,500 to 3,000 people, and we want to give you back a little bit. So that's for Dice Tower Con people. Also, for our people who have already gone on the cruise or have already signed up for the cruise, we want to do a little something special for you because you guys are the core. You guys are the ones who are keeping this, as they say, afloat. So... If you, <laughs> if you reference someone else to come on the cruise and they, when they call in to sign up for the cruise, if they use your email, Cool Stuff, our great partners, will give you a $25 gift certificate for every person that references you that signs up for the cruise. So if you get five people to, to sign up, they all reference your email and they say, this email address is the one who told me about Dice Terror Cruise, you can get like $125 in gift certificates. There's no limit. So however many however many rooms you get friends or, or family or anyone else to come, you're going to get a $25 gift certificate for each one. For anyone who's already signed up for the cruise or anyone who signs up for the cruise in the future, we're doing that as a little thing, as a little thank you. Um, from so you're saying if I get eight people, I get $200 uh, yep, cool if you stuff get, If you get eight, eight people to, to join in in eight rooms, you're going to get $200 worth of cool stuff gift certificates. I can do that. And... Of course, now um, we're making it sound like an infomercial, but yes. But yeah, we wanted to, like... You, we I feel, can? <laughs> I feel strongly that the people who sign up at the beginning are the core. A lot of them are people who returned in, from previous years, and we want to give you something for keeping this going. And, you know, we need all the support we can to make sure we have a full crew so we can do it again and do it even grander next year. So we want to give a little something back to the people who have already signed up. Tom, what is the heaviest Euro gamer that you like? Uh, I'm going to say Demacher is probably the heaviest one I like. I love Demacher. Yeah, that's probably it. How do you define heaviness in the game? The heavier my head does this. Um, <laughs> is there a payment plan option for the cruise, asks Ben. Unfortunately, no. See, we, we've already paid money to Royal Caribbean. We, we pay as we go, so we collect the whole money from you because it would be too much of a hassle to collect $100 here, another $50 here, another $200 here. We just collect it all and we pay Royal Caribbean as we go. So if you haven't booked yet, your room's already been partially paid for to Royal Caribbean, in case you're wondering. Um, and we find it easier to collect all the money and we pay as we go and we have the payment schedule and we're the only ones who have to worry about a payment schedule. We don't have to hunt down 300 rooms worth of people to get payments each time a payment's due. Yeah, really. Um... I understand that we don't have a payment plan, but um, I, I hope that you can come anyway. Um, Jeff says from the Facebook group, it sounds like we don't have to worry about packing many of our own games. Your opinion? 
I didn't bring any games, but technically I did. I brought... You brought like five games and they were all games that... No, no, no. I brought, all, I brought buckets of games. I just stuck them all in the library. Yeah, they were all like games that hadn't come out yet that we got from Essen that you brought, basically. Right, but I mean, I don't worry about games because I just figure if there's something I want to play, it's in the library. Or, like we said, you're going to get some games given to you, so there's that. But really, the library... How many games did we have last year in the library? Like 200? More than that. Uh, yeah, but they weren't, it wasn't a huge library, but they were all very good games. And we're going to yes. try to double that amount, really. Yes, and you don't have to worry. There'll be a game for anyone there. And some people bring games, but you don't have to bring games. And that's the good thing, because remember, you're going home with a whole bag full of games. So there's no reason to bring games, because there's going to be plenty of games there as well. What do you think is the worst component in board games? Paper money. <laughs> yes. Paper money, um, <laughs> paper maps, uh, just just anything that's too thin and, and bends too easily. Tom and Jason, do you like amusement parks like Disney? Yes. yes. What's your favorite type of ride? Roller coaster. Roller coasters used to be my favorite type of ride. I still like them a lot, but I think more than roller coasters, I like... Motion simulator roller coasters? No, I like um, roller coasters that involve animatronics. So they're not like super fast roller coasters. I'm talking like the Mummy's Revenge and yes. Universal, where like you're going pretty fast. It's not like a slow boat ride. It's like a fast ride, and it stops and it starts. Even like Himalaya the, at, at Disney. Expedition that, Everest. Where you, yeah. Expedition Everest. You see things, and you're the like, Yeti. oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. I like those, but tie with those is a really good water flume. I love water flumes. Oh, yes, yes. The Jurassic Park water, water flume. Actually, is... I like the other one better at, at Dudley Universal. Dudley Do-Right? Yeah, I love Dudley Do-Right. Dudley Do-Right Do right. Do right is my favorite flume ever. I love it. It's so fun. Yeah, but, but I, I can't wait for Star Wars. Pandora, the new Pandora ride is supposed to be Did you incredible. hear about the new Star Wars hotel? Yes, yes. And you check in and they give you like Star Wars clothing to wear. I'm, I'm going to be booking at Star Wars Hotel at some point in the near future. Sam's going to be so jealous. I want to be, I want to be like... Check me into Ewok Village, or I don't even know what it's going to be like, but I'm excited about the Star Wars Hotel. Who handles hot and spicy food the best between all of us? Um, well, um, I, I probably wanna, me, I guess. I want to say that I pretend I do, but clearly if you saw the video of me eating the wings in Buffalo, you know that I don't. I was crying as I was eating those death wings. There were tears streaming down That's my face. That's true. I handled them better than you. You did. But I also only ate two because I'm not crazy. I only ate one and that was enough for oh. me. Steve was the one who was like, I'm the tough man. Do you recommend getting the eye surgery you guys got? Here's yes. A, well, yes and no. It is expensive, okay? It was like a birthday gift I gave myself. It's, it, it, if you added up all the price of glasses for the rest of your life, it's probably the same price. You know, it's not. And we might have to get glasses again in the future, like reading glasses and stuff. But reading glasses, you can get at Walmart for like 10 bucks. I really enjoy it for things like when I go to the pool with my kids, I can see where they are now. I know it sounds like a weird thing, but it's really helpful to me. Or when I ride a roller coaster, I can see stuff now. For, for me, the, for me the, the, literally the first time that I went to bed and woke up the next day and I can see my TV without having to look for my glasses to put them on, it... It's, it's just an incredible feeling. That's true. If I fall asleep at night reading a book, I don't have to worry about crushing my glasses. Um, and also, I don't have to worry about breaking my glasses. Because when your glasses break, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, let's see. Have you brought all your games down from New York yet? Yes. Tom knows he helped me unpack them. Oh, I don't know if that was all. I'm just glad that's there. Are you going to WBC? No, because I'm still working the Copa Oro. Isn't that like next? It's like it, this it's, week, isn't it's it? It's next week, but the Copa Oro is still going on, so I can't go. Are we doing a Jack Vass Memorial event on the cruise? Probably not. I don't. It, it's possible. Um, Brian says nice things to you again. Have you had a chance to play Crystal Clans? I have not played it. I don't know much about it. Do I have a favorite video game? I have a lot of favorite video games, but right now my favorite video game is easily currently. Now, this could change. <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild. I keep playing that game. It's so fun. I really, really like it. Um, oof. Do you think any of the reviewers is harsher when reviewing games? Probably I'm the meanest, actually. Now, when you see us do a review together, you'll be like, oh, Sam is mean. You know, I think when it comes down to it, I'm the meanest. But 
I'm mean when it, when I don't like a game. Like Oregon Trail, I was pretty mean too. The Brothers Murph says, asks a question about the cruise. Brothers Murph, email us offline and I'll put you in touch with Jason and he'll give you some ideas about the cruise. Seriously, email us offline. Um, uh, let's see. Today is the last day of internet for my home. Sorry, John, but I'm glad you're using it to watch us. Really? Oh, that stinks. Well, maybe he's doing it on purpose. Some people were cutting the internet, I guess. I don't know if I could just because it, well, obviously I couldn't because it would be our, it, it's my livelihood. <laughs> yes. Have you ever called a game, then later wanted it back, but could never find it? No, that's never happened to me. If I really wanted it, you can find it anyway. But if, you, if I call a game, I don't worry about it too much. Um, are there any games that a Top 100 other than Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective that you haven't ever played. We have played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Well, basically. I haven't. I have You played it. I haven't. I played the... We played it. No, we played the Cthulhu one. Oh, that's right. You, you only played the Cthulhu one. Which, from one. what I understand... It's the same. It's almost the exact same game. Yeah. Uh, let's look here. Uh, all right. Oh, there's one. Food Chain Magnet I haven't played. <laughs> Still. <laughs> I, 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 my 100 <laughs> plays of it make up for his zero plays of it. So, oh. Viticulture Essential Edition. Nah, I, I played that. That doesn't count. Yeah, you're right. Hang on. Okay, so so far there's oh, one. Oh, you actually can see which games you've played. Well, because I rate my games. Oh. That's why I rate them. And you can you can do this, and you just click somewhere like this, and then you can put a rating in. It's really, that's why it won't take that long. Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition? No, I... I, I, I um... now, now he's played it, as you can see. No, I'm going through and just picking the ones... I haven't played second edition, but I played first, and they're almost the same. So in the top 100 games... The only game I haven't played, or there's two games, Food Chain Magnet and Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, and I'm definitely playing Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective within a month. It's going to happen. Food Chain Magnet is, did you see how high it is on the top 100 now? It's 26. I told you, I told you how good a game that was when well, I first There's one, out. I haven't played this one. Sega Sega Har is an amazing game also. Okay, that's 120, 33. Here I stand, I have not played. These are all GMT games, that's why. Navigador, I've never played. Really? Pandemic Iberia, I haven't played. You never Pandemic played Iberia is one. 40? You never played Pandemic Iberia? Didn't you play it with us? No, I wasn't there. 1830. <laughs> Imperial 2030. <laughs> Kingdom Death Monster. Anachrony. I played Kingdom Death Monster. Blood Bowl. Advanced Squad Leader. Space Hulk, third edition. In the Year of the Dragon. You never played In the Year of the Dragon I have. Either. I just haven't rated that one. Indonesia, Civilization, and Kanban. I played more. I bet you I played more. I bet you there's a lot of games in the top 100 that you have not played. Uh, I probably have played all 100 of the top 100. Well, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Let's see. We're, we're going to quickly see go here. through this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip all the ones I know you've played, okay? <laughs> um, well, you almost haven't played. Well, we get, I, I played made you play Gloomhaven. So we can't say I didn't. Yeah, that's true. Hang on. Let's see. I think I'll find one. I don't think you, you will. Oh, yeah. Brass you're... Lancashire okay, is no, that's brass. Right, that's right, right. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> that's brass. original brass. Um, I'll find one. You know, this is not fair. Most of these I've taught you. I know. Um, no, a lot of them I played before I knew you, too. Well, I, the, the top 100 is now very, very... It's a lot of newer games I've noticed. There's so many games in here, I'm like, ooh, I bet Jason hasn't played that. I'm like, no, I, I, I showed him that game. <laughs> oh, no, maybe he's right. We're getting down farther. Um, have you played Nations? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Have you played Pass of Glory? Yes. Oh, okay. Or as we call it, Pog. Who's we? All the people who have been playing it for 20 years since it came out. Uh, have you played La Grania? Yes. I didn't like it. Hansa Teutonica? Of course. Hunter Tonica is great. And Wait, you haven't played Zombies on Black Plague, have you? I played it that one time here on the live play, and then, of course, ah, I... Uh, he I has played all died. the top 100. Yes, I've played wow. every game in the top 100. Okay, let's, let's go down until we find the first game you haven't played, because the there's going to be one. Yeah, you, let, let, now we're going to find the first game I haven't played in the top 100. Uh, no, in the top... In the top whatever it is. Um, mm. Have you played Dungeon Pets? Yes. Hmm... I know you played Bora Bora because I was in that game. Uh, have you played Here I Stand? Yes. Have you played Sid Meier's Civ? No. 
That's the first one. Number 142 is the first game I haven't played. What? Insanity. All right, we're far behind in questions. Now let's catch up. <laughs> okay. Um, did you purchase a component collector off Kickstarter? What's a component collector? I don't know. I don't know, but that sounds kind of cool, whatever it is. Insider or Werewords? As much as I like Insider and I don't like the Werewords theme, the Werewords app makes it a better game, for sure. Yes, I agree. Oh, the reflections of my computer. Yeah, my computer's doing a screensaver. That's why you're seeing different things move. Um, Tom has the coolest screensaver in the history of screensavers, if I have to say. I, I always am fascinated by the cool things he has. Is it possible one day we may do a Dice Air Cruise with dialysis at sea? What is that? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Do you try to play a game at all? A game at all player counts before reviewing. If not, how do you decide which player counts to try it at? I just try it at one that seems le uh, legitimate. And when I'm playing it, if I'm thinking, "Wow, this would be really different with two, or this would be really different with more players," and I, I'll make I'll play with those players counts. But most of the time, I'm like, I, I can get a sense of how it feels with all the players. Yeah, uh, I do try to play with different player counts if I can. What's the difference between approved dice tower rating and a seal of excellence? Approved is six or seven out of ten. Excellence is eight or nine or ten. Um, where can you find numeric ratings of our games? On our website at dicetower.com or Board Game Geek. You can do for me, but you can't find Jason's ratings at Board Game Geek. One day, maybe. Um, let's see. Oops, we just jumped down. Sorry. Oh, I'm not answering questions about top 100 right now because we're going to be, I'm actually putting my top 100 together right now and you'll be seeing that soon. Your favorite gaming accessory upgrade besides a nice table? <sighs> Poker chips are pretty good. Poker chips are great. I mean, by law, we're supposed to, we're supposed to say Dice Tower. Um, but I think poker chips are probably better than that. Or a dice tray, even. What's your pick for Hogo do Ano? I don't know how to say that. Jogo? I don't know. Jogo do Ano. I know that's probably game of the year. So, okay, between these games, Great Western Trail, Terra Scythe, Tramways, or Yokohama? Well, have you played Yokohama yet? Yes, I have. Do you like it? It's Istanbul-like. It's a little better than Istanbul. It's a lot better than um, Istanbul. But the same thing that I felt when I did my top 10 of last year, Great Western Trail is, is my second favorite game of last year. And that's the one that What's I... What's your favorite game from last year? Star Wars Rebellion. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, Star Wars Rebellion is the game of the year. I'm looking forward to the expansion for that. I don't know what it's going to add. I know it's supposed to add stuff from like Rogue One which was the best movie of the year last year, so I can't wait for the expansion for Rebellion. Who's your favorite person in the game with Tom, Z, or Sam? They're not watching. <laughs> They're not in this room either. No. Actually, I like I, playing with Jason sometimes more than both of them. I like playing Sam and Z a lot. Don't get me wrong. They're very fun and great to play with. But Jason will play anything. Yes. No, I, I like playing with everyone. I mean... We all have different games. Like with Z, we play a lot of thought-provoking two-player games. They're not here. You had your chance. No, I, I, and with Sam, we play a lot of like fighting war games. And with Tom, I play everything. No, I like playing with everyone. I'm not. I'm not particular who I play with. Um, I understand some economics of the idea, but would you ever consider putting on an event in Los Angeles for us West Coasters? <sighs> not right now, and probably not for a long time. We can't really divide our resources between too many events, and it just makes a lot of sense for us to run this out of our backyard, so to speak. We can get the games there easier. We can go look at the cruise ship and walk around on it. Yes, yeah. Unfortunately, it's, it's tough to do it. I mean, if one day maybe we'll switch to cruise, but right now it's much easier. Obviously, getting the Dice Tower Library from Orlando to Fort Lauderdale is just dropping it in the U-Haul, and it goes right there, which is much easier than... than shipping it across the country and it would incur more expenses and you know we, we we try to keep the price low that's something we always felt is we want to keep the price as low as possible we don't want to incur extra charges like shipping a library and things into the cost of it because we want to keep it as low as possible for everyone so more people could come and enjoy the fun um this person says last year dice tower didn't seem interested in singles i tried contact dice tower a couple times it got passed on adjacent but in reality no real help was provided 
is Dice Tower more organized this time? Well, I hope we are, but I'm not sure I understand what you're asking here. So you're saying that we aren't helpful to people who want to have a room. If you want a room by yourself, it's yours. No problem. Yes. It costs more, though. It, you want to share a room with somebody else, that's a little bit more difficult. We have to find someone to match you with. Yeah, so, so I've matched two rooms this year so far. The problem is sometimes I get someone who wants a room and waiting for a roommate. Sometimes they, they're they there and it's great and there happened to be someone that asked me the same week and I'm like, I put the two people together. Um, what I recommend, which I've recommended to everyone who's, who's looking for a roommate is there's a thread called looking for a roommate on our Board Game Geek forum. And if you go there and say I'm interested you'll find someone much easier than me waiting for someone else to email me saying that they're also looking for a roommate. Because I only could match people if two different people email me. Until I get two emails, I can't really match people. So it's, it's much easier to post and say, I'm looking for a roommate on the Board Game Geek forum because you'll find someone much quicker than me waiting for a second person to come. Um, do you always use, so, I mean, seriously though, if you want to come, if there's anything, please email us. We will make, we will do what we can to make it happen. If it doesn't work, email us at dicedower at gmail.com. I will likely pass you off to Jason on the first one, but he will respond as soon as his job lets him and you, you, you have pretty fast turnaround on that. Yeah, I mean. Believe me, we are, we are full bore thinking about the cruise at this point. Yeah, right now, if you need to email me, dicetowercruise at gmail.com and I get tons of emails. I answer them all at all hours of the day pretty quickly. Um, that's what this nice iPhone's for, is you can answer email whenever. Um, so, yeah, just email dicetowercruise at gmail.com and I could help answer any questions. Do you always use set dominion scenarios or you just randomize the cards? Randomize? Kind of randomize. I do what's called semi-random, is I pull cards out, but if I notice we have too many fives, I'll throw them back in and keep going so we have a like one, two, some threes, some fours, and a, a couple fives, maybe even a six or something. But not, I don't want too many of different costs. I use the app. The, the app always gives you a good assortment. Well, then there's that too. Okay, we're going to start, we're going to scan through the questions a little faster now. We're going to answer any cruise things. Um, Brothers Murph, don't forget to email me about the cruise. Um, we're just looking for cruise questions first, and then if there's anything else. Dialysis is a company that offers dialysis on cruise ships since people on dialysis cannot go more than one day without it. Uh, so I guess the answer is if you come on Dice Tower Cruise, you could contact them and get a dialysis machine, I guess is the answer. I don't see why Royal Caribbean wouldn't let a dialysis machine come on. I don't know about that. Whatever would happen, we'll, we'll try to work on it. Um, Jason, would you ever consider leaving your job to work with the Dice Tower full time? Not at the moment because, you know, I need my job in order to pay my mortgage and things. But one day when my mortgage is paid up and I don't have any expenses, yeah, I could, I could, see, I could see doing this full time. Um, but, you know, at the moment right now, I have, I have too many expenses to take care of that I couldn't do it full time. This one says, I never rate it Wrath of a Shardlon. I must go there and rate it now. Wrath of... Uh, no, I did rate it. I rated it an eight. An eight. I rated it. He rated it, so... Sorry. I really did rate it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Chase, what's your favorite soccer game team? Uh, well, USA, obviously, and they're in the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup. But if I had to pick a team that was not a national team, right now it's Borussia Dortmund. And the reason why is because Christian Pulisic is our 18-year-old USA phenomenon, and he's on that team, and they're one of the best teams they play for. They're, they were in the Champions League last year, and they're phenomenal. In fact, they're right close to Essen. Unfortunately, when we go to Essen this year, they're not playing a home game because if they were, I would have totally went over to see their home game because Dortmund's like maybe less than an hour from Essen. I would have totally went to see them, but unfortunately they don't have a home game that week. So no, I'm not going to see them this year. But Borussia Dortmund, the black and yellow. Chuck says, Tom, I'm attending my first, I'm attending my first Gen Con in 24 years, and I'm looking forward to seeing Dice Tower live in person. Anything attendees of the show can look forward to that you are willing to spoil? Um, no actually. 
still working on the show myself now, but I'll tell you this, the Dice Tower itself is making two pretty big announcements about the show in the future. So there is that. Yeah. Shut that door. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Come here. Look, look who it is. Come over here. Want to see? Want to see the camera? Here, look. You can see yourself in the camera. <laughs> here, swing around me here. Now he's being shy. Who is that? <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Do you guys all know Jimmy? Say hi to the camera. <laughs> no, wave, wave at the camera over there. Wave. Say hi. <laughs> no, say hello. Uh. <laughs> and, and watch this. Jimmy's really smart now. What's my name again, Jimmy? Mr. What? What's his name? <laughs> Who is that? It's okay, you don't need to know, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about having an icebreaker for younger cruisers? I'm 12 now, and last year I didn't see many other kids in the game rooms. That's something I'm, I'm, I'm considering setting up. We're, we're going to work on that and figure out what we can do. Yes, yes. For we'll... all the kids and stuff, we'll have them all get together at some point. Yes. We could even make... We we will definitely, area. maybe the first night also, have like a kids area where they can all sit together maybe. Yes, yeah, I think that for, would the, totally for dinner work. and stuff. Um, can match it together if you play in the cruise? You can play pretty much anything you want. We're yeah. not going to stop you from playing games. You can, you can play role-playing games in the cruise. Um, so... I think that's pretty much all the questions. It's 901, folks. So we got to end here. Let's make our announcements again for those who missed it. Go ahead. Um, if you went to Dice Tower Con, we're giving you a month, and you will. We're extending the fifty dollars discount that we announced at Dice Tower Con, um, which was supposed to only be during the con, but we're extending it for a month. So if you went to Dice Tower Con, one of the three thousand people, and you want to get a room on Dice Tower Cruise, when you call in, let them let the cool stuff people know that you went to Dice Tower Con and you'll get a $50 discount off the price of the room, um, which is really nice. Um, and in addition, as with something I didn't mention, is everyone gets a $50 onboard credit as well, which you can use for spending on either drinks or pictures or something else. So between the two of them, you're basically getting a $100 discount off the price. Um, and if you're already signed up for the cruise and you're one of our current members who are That's coming with us, if you refer any of your friends, relatives, anyone you know, and they, when they call in, if they give your email address and say that they were referred by you, Cool Stuff is being generous to give $25 gift certificates for each reference room to the person who referenced it. So if you're already signed up, we're giving you a little extra bonus for being one of the first people to sign up for the cruise. And for everyone who signs up, who says that you were the one who got them to sign up, we're giving you a $25 gift certificate via Cool Stuff. So you'll see email blasts for both of those very shortly. For those who are already on a cruise, I'll send it out through the cruise email group. And for those who attend the Dice Tower Con, you should be getting a big email blast from Dice Tower Con as well. So look forward to those. You know, we're looking forward to filling up the cruise soon and we're excited. It's going to be a good time. It's only a few months away. So remember, get on board now before it does sell out. Yeah, and again, you can email us at DiceTowerCruise at gmail.com or DiceTower at gmail.com and we'll make sure it gets to the right spot. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Do you know why you're saying goodbye? It's time for bed. You ready for bed? No. I say yes. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Do you want to go to bed? No. <laughs> no. Yes. Bed is fun. All right. So, anywho, hang on, raise your hand. I'm going <laughs> to raise your other hand. Raise this hand. All right, you gonna? All right. Oh, oh, ah. Bye, buddy. Anyway, folks. Until next time. I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And this is Jimmy. Vassell, that is. Well, I hope so. <laughs>